Welcome back to Paul's Tech News, where I recap the tech things that happened in the past week that I thought were interesting. I've covered some harrowing and controversial topics in the past, but today I need to start with a warning for those who are easily excited or susceptible to the vapors, or especially if you've struggled with histrionics in the past, be aware that today's tech news includes a significant dose of a foreign substance that might shock you and cause tingly side effects. Hope. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. This week, the hardware subreddit was abuzz with such uncharacteristically optimistic statements that I had to pinch myself to be sure I wasn't hallucinating again. There are just a few tracers, fortunately, but it seems that Ethereum, which has been the go-to coin for GPU-based cryptocurrency mining for a long time now because that's kind of how it was designed, might be changing for the better, at least if you're an aspiring PC gamer in need of a graphics card for actual PC gaming. The Ethereum Improvement Proposal, or EIP-1559, was greenlit back in March, and it will roll out with a hard fork coming in July. This will centralize and reduce transaction fees, which can be a significant chunk of Ethereum mining profits. For instance, in February 2021, it was estimated that about 50% of ETH mining profits were from transaction fees. Even though EIP-1559 hasn't rolled out yet, miners are reporting increased mining difficulty and reduced profits. And as with any speculative market, there are many who are eager to make moves before major shifts take place. The big jump to Ethereum 2.0 is expected in October 2021, at which point traditional Ethereum mining with GPUs will likely go extinct, at least in terms of profitability. The upshot is that for now, aspiring miners are being advised to limit their aspirations, especially if they're only just trying to get in on the current crypto boom. There's less time every day to make a return on a GPU investment, and it's even tougher if you're paying scalper prices at two to three times MSRP. And since I didn't take a drink of my beer after I poured it in the intro, now's a good time to say, I'll drink to that. Cheers guys, thanks for joining me. Now, part of the reason Ethereum mining profitability is down could be because the once ASIC resistant crypto now has ASIC systems available that can mine it. And it's speculated that these units coming online since mid-December are increasing the difficulty rate. Ethereum blocks are output at a fixed rate and the difficulty to mine them changes based on how many miners are mining. So more miners does not mean more Ethereum. It means the difficulty for each miner increases. Bitmain this week introduced the Antminer E9 system, which is powered by custom ASICs that can hit a 3 giga hash per second hash rate while only consuming 2,556 watts. That might seem like a lot of power, but it's about the mining equivalent of 32 NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 graphics cards, so it's more efficient and more cost effective, even with an expected price tag of $15,000 to $20,000. So with Ethereum ASICs coming online to reduce GPU mining profits, EIP-1559 set to reduce transaction fee payouts, Ethereum 2.0 on the horizon, and more GPUs being manufactured every day, there's reason to have some hope for the future if you just want to build a gaming PC. I would also add, as GPU mining profitability drops, we'll hopefully see a flood of used GPUs on the market, reducing prices even further, maybe even by mid to late summer. Finally, if you think that all these GPU miners will just be switching to some other crypto variant instead, I'd point you to Tech Yes City Brian's recent video covering the market share for Ethereum and its derivatives versus other options that are viable for mining with a graphics card. He includes some great charts and graphs on the topic, but Ethereum actually represents a huge percentage of that market, so it really could be a catalyst for popping the GPU pricing bubble if all of this plays out. Another drink of beer. Okay, I've spent enough time talking about hopeful things, let's talk about something depressing again. Like this motherboard. This stupid, stupid motherboard has 32 SATA ports with power and data, so you can just stick your hard drives or SSDs to it for Chia mining. Chia, the new cryptocurrency that becomes tradable this week on May 3rd, is based on a proof of space and time model, which I thought Stephen Hawking had already sorted out for us, but I guess not. And it is causing a run on storage devices at the moment. High capacity hard drives and, to a lesser extent, 
extent SSDs are being bought up on the off chance that Chia blows up and becomes the next Bitcoin. And motherboard manufacturer that I've never heard of before, Onda, has created this monstrosity, the B365D32-D4 Magic Edition, a name that makes me hate it even more because it reminds me of Apple's marketing. Okay, I guess Onda has actually been around for some time, and this is not their first 32 SATA slot board, but I still hate it for what it represents. Chia speculation has already led to a 500% increase in ADATA SSD sales, and Galax issued a statement saying that crypto mining on their SSDs, not their GPUs, mind you, but their SSDs, will void the warranty if data write volume is higher than specified. AMD's Zen 4 architecture isn't even out yet, but there's a rumor already about a Zen 5-based APU. Codenamed Strixpoint, the chip would presumably be part of the Ryzen 8000 family of processors and feature 3 nanometer lithography and a combination of 8 high-performance cores with multi-threading and 4 high-efficiency cores, so 20 threads total, and a configuration that indicates AMD is also going the same route as Intel's Alder Lake, with next-gen processors having a hybrid design with some cores made for performance and others made for low power draw. Of course, ARM was the first to this hybrid game with their Big Little design, which was a great solution for mobile chips, and that's probably the core reason why AMD and Intel have this in the works for laptops and other mobile devices. Zen 5 chips aren't expected until 2024, says Marvin at least, who originally published this story on MoPC.net. Now here's some more potentially good news for gamers, Microsoft making a good decision, that being to reduce the cut that the Microsoft Store takes on game sales from 30% down to 12%. This brings them in line with the Epic Games Store, which has received a good deal of praise for the game developer friendly 12% revenue split that they currently use. This could pressure Valve to make a similar move with the Steam Store, where the cut is still 30%, a number that many say is too high, especially for indie developers. Microsoft is still not to be trusted, of course, but it's nice to see them making consumer-friendly moves in the PC gaming space that they neglected for so long. Heck, even the Microsoft Game Pass is pretty appealing these days if you want to try out some new games on the PC. A bit of sad news next, just wanted to pay my respects to Daniel Kaminsky, a security researcher who passed away last Friday at his home in San Francisco. He was only 42, an outspoken advocate of internet privacy and security, and he famously discovered a huge DNS flaw in 2008 that could very well have broken the whole internet had he not worked with Microsoft and others to secretly patch it. Rest in peace, Daniel. Thanks for helping us move cat pictures around the internet more securely. Apple is in a big legal battle over in the EU that should continue to play out this week, but the European Commission has already issued a formal statement of objections against the tech giant. Apple now has 12 weeks to respond and clarify why Spotify users are forced to pay for purchases with Apple's in-app mechanism that also happens to give Apple a 30% commission on the transaction. Further, Apple actively prevented services from showing customers alternative ways to pay that got around the fees. Companies like Spotify have to either eat the cost or increase their prices, making their services on the App Store less competitive versus Apple Music. Apple's fee doesn't apply universally to all apps in its store, but it does apply to all music streaming apps except Apple Music, and the EU EC takes issue with that. Lots still to come as this plays out, along with Apple's ongoing spat with Epic Games, so we'll circle back for an update next week. And now it's time for tech briefs. I was originally going to put all the GPU news here because a few people said that they were getting sick of graphics cards, so I was going to get it all over with very quickly. But then I still ended up talking about a lot of GPU stuff already today, uh, but what can you do? Anyway, here are brand new GPUs that have been discovered this week. Aren't they exciting? Video cards spotted an MSI RTX 3080 Ti Supreme X in its retail box even, so the 3080 Ti is on its way with the rumored dates now being May 18th for an announcement with a release date and review embargo lift on May 26th. I think this one is actually sold out already, and, and that's fine. Maybe you're not excited about GPUs because you probably can't buy them, but what about GPUs with fancy colors? Here's a Radeon RX 6700 XT, the Hellbound edition from PowerColor, and they teased a white PCB version of it. I like white PCBs because they're unique and challenging to manufacture, but again, not much hope for wide availability for this one. What's better than white though? How about pink? Here's Colorful's relaunch of their Color Fire series with pink fans and shrouds and even pink backplate accents. Isn't that nice? And hey, these are GTX cards, not RTX. A GTX 1650, 1650 Super, and 1660 Super. So maybe these will actually go up for sale in China, probably. 
Speaking of GPUs, update your GPU drivers. NVIDIA has warned that there are five GPU display driver security bugs and eight vGPU software vulnerabilities in their driver package, most ranking between seven and eight out of 10 on the CVSS vulnerability scale, making them high severity. Now, NVIDIA has a security page set up with the uh, descriptions of the different vulnerabilities and what they are, and also which drivers and stuff are affected, but basically you should just get the latest version of NVIDIA's graphics driver, that's 466.27 right now, get that or newer to get your system all patched up. It seems that NVIDIA is also continuing efforts to make GPUs that are less appealing to crypto miners by limiting their hash rates. And although their first attempt was laughable because NVIDIA themselves released a driver that removed the limiter, they're not giving up. The entire 30 series, except the RTX 3090, will apparently be refreshed with actual different silicon SKUs, but we'll have to wait and see if these light hash rate card versions actually limit mining via hardware or if it's another easily worked around software limitation. They're expected in June. Acer made the handful of people who have 360 hertz refresh rate monitors feel bad this week with the announcement of the Nitro XV2 monitor that has a 390 hertz refresh rate. It's an overclocked 360 hertz IPS panel to be clear, but it feels like an in-between offering to me, like when they went from 120 hertz to 144 hertz. If the $730 price tag seems like a lot for a 1080 display though, just remember that 1080p at 240 hertz is just as many pixels per second as 4K60. It's true. Finally, if you're tired of overpriced GPUs, how about an overpriced game console instead? The Royal Wii is for sale. That's a great pun by the way, CNN. Specifically, this is a Nintendo Wii that was gold-plated and gifted to Her Majesty the Queen, Elizabeth II, leader of the Andals and the First Men, etc., back in 2009. Somehow, it made its way into the hands of Donnie Fillerup, Great name, by the way, too there, Donnie, a console enthusiast from the Netherlands who runs the online database Console Variations, who is now selling the unit for 300,000 US dollars so he can get a new apartment. The console works and is in good condition, but the golden Wiimote has some wear on the bottom, presumably from when Her Majesty chucked it at her flat screen TV after a particularly competitive Wii Sports session. So there you have it, guys, tech news for this week. And thanks for joining me today. Your feedback is always welcome, so go ahead and explore the comments area down below below and see what you find. While you're down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. And you can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for all your high quality merchandise needs, including new beer sets. And subscribe to my channel, of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.